Um, so today, we have our very own Apostle Buddy. So please stand and um, welcome our Apostle Buddy, Jesus. Glory, glory, God bless. All right, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our griefs and sins to bear. Sing it with me now. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what sin we often deliverer and waiting for our prayer we're so glad you're here today good to see you good everybody as we begin to return back to the house of God to worship you know you worship at a distance but it's nothing like worshiping in the presence with other worshipers we're so thankful I'm so glad to see you God bless you let's introduce the Holy Spirit to this service he's already been here but let's introduce him holy spirit we invite you now we encourage you we desire your presence we pray for the anointing open hearts open minds let those things that we've been seeking those questions be answered today we're just so blessed with your presence today thank you for the lord jesus christ in his name we pray and lift up in this day and all the saints together said amen god bless you may be seated thank you god bless you hallelujah well we could have another shout down but i guess we'll just move on thank you <laughs> well hallelujah everybody okay today everybody going to be okay today amen we're here to be okay. We're more than okay. We are blessed. We are blessed to be in the presence of the Most High God. Well, you know, it's interesting. We're a prophetic church, and bringing the word of the Lord, I always seek him and say, Lord, what is it that's on your mind? What's on your heart? What is it you have to say today? And so this week, I sat down and I said, okay, Lord, what's on your mind? And immediately, he said, Joel. Oh, I mean, there was no hesitation. I, I, I said, Lord, what's on your mind? He said, Joel. I said, well, I guess we better look into Joel then and see what Joel would say to us for today. So today I have what the title is, The Testimony of Joel. As we look into this great book that's in the Bible, in the latter part of the Old Testament, it's one of the minor prophets, and you can lose it if you're not careful. It's only about four or five pages long in the Bible. But anyway, that's where we're headed this morning, to talk about the testimony of Joel. Joel. Well, you know, there's a... There's a overview of this. It's so interesting because Joel, as the minor prophet, was able to give us an insight into what was going on, the application of what was present, and then he was able to forecast the church for the future. And so it was quite a, an insight into the nature and personality of our Heavenly Father. And anytime we can know him better, it helps us to know ourselves better and how to respond to him. Now, Joel's text came in two parts. There was the first part, you could say the before and after. 
or what the way things could be rather than as they or as they should be rather than the way they were. The first part of it was about devastation and destruction. And he, Joel, was making a big issue out of the fact that there was the swarm of locusts that had come into Judah and devoured all of the greenery, all of the agriculture. Everything was devastated. There was nothing that was left. He, he said it was like an army. He compared it to an army. He said it was like an army with four divisions. They had those who were chewing, those that were chomping, those that were munching, and those that were gobbling. He divided up these locusts into a, into a division of an army. And he said not only that, they march in cadence. They march in regimentation. They don't even get in each other's way. They are organized. This is devastating never has there been anything like this and he said you know you need to be sure and tell your children tell all of your friends don't let them forget a time like this and so it was that he was really 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 driving home that this is a historical time it reminds me of today it reminds me of what we are experiencing this last year. We've never seen a time like this. It's devastating and it's destructive in many ways. And so he was saying the economy is ruined. That We would say the economy is ruined. The stock market's gone down. The relationships are stressed. There's racial division going on. There's, uh, there's all kinds of issues taking place. Wow, what's going on, Lord? What, what, is, what is going on? And let me, let me tell you, I'm going to let Joel do a lot of the speaking uh, this morning as he was saying in, uh, turn it to the next page. He was saying, the field is wasted. The land mourns for the grain is ruined. The new wine is dried up. The oil fails. Be ashamed, you farmers. Well, you wine dressers for the wheat and the barley because the harvest of the field has perished. The vine has dried up and the fig tree has withered. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree. All the trees of the field are withered. Surely joy has withered away from the sons of men. It was a depressing time. Difficult time. And, and, you know, it was a time of, of really of, of judgment. That was the question. You see, in those days, it, everything was agriculture. That was before we had the age of enlightenment. Nearly all of the things where they made their money was from agriculture. 98% of the people were involved in agriculture, so they were tied to God. If it rained, it's God. If it didn't rain, it's God. If there was locusts to come, it, that was a sign of a curse that if, if there were good rains and former rains and latter rains and everything could happen, did happen, then they were blessed. You see, they didn't understand about the Federal Reserve. They didn't understand about the stock market. They didn't know how to blame people. They didn't know how to blame the presidents. They didn't know how to blame the Congress. They didn't know how to blame anybody. All they knew to do was say, wait a minute, something ain't right. I better go to God. Something's not working here. I think I better go find out what's going on. Oh, Mike, it, it, surely it's somebody's problem. Maybe it's China. They didn't even know about China. Somebody, they were not enlightened, so they had to go and say, well, must be God. Let's look and see what it is. You see, the, the problem, the question is, that comes to mind is, this is the question, people, is this from God or from the devil? Are we in judgment or not? See, that's, we, we, we would depend on who we ask, wouldn't it? If, if I asked the Pentecostal, they'd say, well, just wait. We'll see. God will show us. 
The Holy Spirit will come in the right time. And, and if we went to the fundamentalists, they would say, oh, these are the signs of the time. We won't make it through the night. There's a rapture on the way. It'll be in the morning. We won't even have time to get ready. Rapture's on the way. It's so bad. If you went to the charismatic, they say, oh, brother, we just got to take authority over this thing and pull this thing down and bind it on the earth and bind it in the heavens. That's what we got to do. We got to get our forces up and clap our hands and rejoice. There's no judgment here. We just got to take on. If you went to the Presbyterian, they'd say, well, what is is what he is. There's nothing we can do about it. It's programmed by God, and it's going to be. What's going to be is going to be, so just live with it. But you see, that was, that's the question that we're, we're, we're asking today, and, and uh, is it divine judgment? And I tell you what, it came so quickly, didn't it? Let me ask you something. Have you ever had something in your life happen quickly? When you were at the top and suddenly everything was right and then all of a sudden your world was upside down. And did you go to God and say, wait a minute, God, what's going on here? What, 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 what did I do or what do I need to do? I have. I've had my life change in a moment. When I thought this is so good and then all of a sudden this is so bad. <laughs> And so that was, what, that was what Joel was saying. Wait a minute, this divine judgment. Now, let me ask you, God took me to Joel, and he said, this is judgment. I think we need to think about that, don't you? I think we need to say, now, many would deny that there's ever, God would ever bring judgment on us. I mean, come on, we're, we're enlightened. We're a people of, of, of sophistication. We, we've read the Bible, Old and New Testament. We, we, we know about all of this. But then God says, wait a minute. Just like he deals with you and me, he deals with nations and people and the body of Christ and the church. And he says, wait a minute, you need to wake up. You're headed in the wrong direction. And the good news is God is saying, that's not the direction I want you to go. I want you to go in this direction so I can bless you. I want to bless you. That's what is in my heart. That is, I am love. I want to love you. I want to bless you. But if you keep going in this direction, you're going in the wrong direction, and I can't align with that. Somebody ought to get a witness here this morning. Somebody should agree with where we're headed. And he said, things are so bad. The, the, the locusts have come. They've devoured everything. And what is it that we need to learn from this? So that we move on, and, and in part two, we talked about part one. Part two is now we're coming up on, and he says, go blow the trumpet. He says in 2, 12, 11, and 12, he said, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Get all the inhabitants of the land, tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, for it is at hand. He say, this is divine judgment. Divine judgment is going. Declare it. Blow the trumpet. Let all know that this is time for repentance. This is time for introspection. This is time for reevaluation. This is a time of looking at where are your priorities. Now, I know I'm not talking to the right people here and online, but if you know of somebody that might need to hear this, you might want to let them know about it. Call to repentance. He says it's, to, it's repentant. And they said, well, it, you know, it must be the king. No, Joash was the king. He was a good king. Good king Joash. So we couldn't blame President Trump or President Biden. They couldn't blame the good, good king. Well, what about the priest? Jehovah was the priest, and he was a good priest. He was God's man, and he was instructing Joash, and this was probably one of the strongest combinations. So what were they, who could they blame? They had to blame themselves. You see, God wanted more than anything 
to change their hearts. That's what he was saying. If you just change your heart, that would make the difference. That would make the difference. He said in listening to 23 and 32, let me read you some verses. He's saying, well, verse 12, let's start there of the second chapter. Now, therefore, saith the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. So rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. He knows if he will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him. So we begin to see the nature. Aren't you glad that the nature of God is to bless Aren't you glad that he wants us to repent? Aren't you glad that he wants to fill us with himself? That he wants to fill us with joy? That he wants to lift us up? That he wants to bless us? That is his heart. He is not a punishing God. His reason for chastisement and direction is to align with him, not pull against him. If we align with him, he can bring his promises and prosperity to bear. Do you realize if we as a church in this nation right here all got on our knees and repented, we wouldn't have any of these issues that we're dealing with. If we just as a church bowed down our knee and said this is not honoring to God, all of a sudden our problems would disappear. We don't believe that. We, church, we got to quit second-guessing God. God's real clear who he is and what he demands and what he wants. It's not confusing. Align with his plans and purposes and words, and then that aligns with his blessing. And that's what he was saying to them at Joel's time. I am a God of love. I want this, but I have to get your attention. And they were caught up in the problems. Understandably, they had no seed corn for the next harvest. They had no grain for their livestock. They couldn't even go to the temple. He said they were so confused that they didn't even go into the temple. They didn't know whether to close the temple down or not. So they closed the temple down. People didn't go to the temple, but they couldn't, couldn't feed their livestock. They couldn't do anything. It was a devastating time. But God says, wait a minute. If you repent, it'll change. Hello. All right. So he did, and then he goes and he said, be glad. Be glad? Why be glad? Let's look at what he said. Let's, let's let, the, let the Bible do the speaking. And he said there, looking at verses starting with 23, he said, Be glad, then you children of, Regina, Re, of Zion, and rejoice in the word God. Let me rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain faithfully, and he will cause the rain to come down for you. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. The threshing floor shall be full of wheat. Hello. And the vat shall overflow with new wine and oil, so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dwelt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be put to shame. We're talking about the church. If we align, the church will not be put to shame. God did not raise up a weak church. He raised up a powerful church to take dominion in the area, in the world in which we've been given the authority, not to condemn, not to beat down, but in order that we can love up the people in this generation. We've grown weak and weary. But it's not too late. And that was the message that he had. They said then, 
Then it shall come to pass. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Thank you, Jesus. Old men will dream dreams. And your young men shall see vision. Okay, you're about to get a vision. And I'm dreaming everything. I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming. <laughs> and you've got vision. He said, that's the good news. It's the good news. Be glad. Don't be despised. He says he, he even prophesied the church. Joel didn't have any idea what he was talking about, but he knew it was God, and he had to say it. You have to say what you believe God's saying. And then he was talking about the day of the Lord. And then he went on even and, and, and prophesied that there was another day coming after that day in which it would be a, a day in which the Christ would come and there would be a difference. So he says, be glad, be glad, be glad. And, uh, and the, we'll prophesy and we'll bring forth the truth and, and we'll know the truth and the truth will set us free. So it was judgment time judgment time and he said don't and he went to them the second time and he said first time I blew the trumpet was to alarm you to the fact that there's judgment but then they went and they blew the trumpet again and this time it says it was to the people come gather together and, re and, and repent and get down on your knees and don't just rent your clothes don't just rent your, your, your the, put ashes on your head do something different Don't just pray and whine and moan and groan and then the curse is released and you go back to being your old sinful self. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Business as usual. And that's what he's saying. Don't forget this one. This is not business. He said, blow the trumpet in Zion, concentrate a fast, call a sacred assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders, gather the children and babies. Let all of them come together because I got some good news for you. And the good news is, if you repent, I'm going to replace. The, old, the former rain has always been there, but the latter rain is about to come. If you'll just change your mind, change your way, and commit your life. Let me tell you, church, if my, our job right here is to speak to the Life Center and all those that are connected. And if we will repent and do what God says, he will bring a latter rain that will cover us up with the blessing of God. If we will align with his plan and purposes. Now we can go and pray and do all of that and then don't do anything different. It's time to change. The church is changing. The church is changing. I've been preaching. I've been preaching. it. It's time for the church to change. It's time for us to get up and get to work. Start doing what it is that God's taught us to do and helped us to do and encouraged us to do. So we've got the future. He says it's not too late. You won't be despised. You're going to be anointed for such a time as this. So that's where we get the, the title, the testimony of Joel. It's, it's pretty simple. Pray, repent, and be glad. That's what his testimony was. Pray. Repent and get glad. Get happy. Don't worry none. You're not going to be despised. You're going to show up. I'm going to prophesy. You're going to show up and things going to begin to change around you. You don't know what to say. It doesn't matter. You won't have to know how to, what to say. You're just going to show up because you see you carry the Christ. And you, when you show up, the Christ shows up. God shows up. He's ready. The Holy Spirit goes to work. Your, your job is to carry the Holy Spirit around and let him do what he wants to do. Get out of his way and let him have his way. Let him do. Rejoice and be glad. We can't figure it out. We can just join in with God. I've said it so many times. If you want to know how to have success, just find out where God's going. Line up with him and go with him. And he'll, he'll take you to that place. That is, it's not complicated. I know I've tried it both ways. <laughs> 
I've tried it in my own strength, and I've tried it in the strength of the Lord. It doesn't mean you're apathetic. It doesn't mean you're lazy. It doesn't mean you're inactive. You do what you know to do while you're doing it, and then you're doing it, and then you look and see, and God will put in the correction. You do what you know to do. You don't do what you don't know to do. Don't worry about what you don't know. Do what you do know. Amen. Amen. But here's the good news. Out of all of that, in, in 232, it says here, let me read that one to you again. And it came to pass that whosoever called on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the Old Testament prophet talking. Whosoever, he said, not Jews only or Hebrews, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved for in the Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance as the Lord has said among the remnant whom the Lord calls. How many of you know you're part of a remnant right now? You're not, you already are part of the remnant right now. If you stand for the cross, if you stand for truth, if you stand for God and all of his principles and purposes, you are a remnant now. You already are. We are. We're already part of a, 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 of a group that's, that's got to get realize that the bulk is shrinking. I'm telling you, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm not telling you. I'm, all I'm saying is, it's time to trust God. It's time. It's time to trust God. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord. And then he went on to say one other thing that we need to say. He says in the third chapter, he, he says, okay, you've had this devastation. You're waked up. Not woke, but waked. <laughs> You're waked up. Now, turn your hearts Get out there. Folks going to get saved. Get out there and start rejoicing and be strengthened. And he says, and also know you got a fight on your hands. Don't pull back. Don't quit. He told them it this way. He said, beat your plowshares into swords. Take those farming implements that you've used to, to farm with. Now we're going to make them a sword. Take your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble and come, all you nations, and gather together all around because your mighty ones to go down there, O oh Lord. God is saying, I'm taking an army, and we're going to take some territory. And we're about to declare the righteousness of God, the kingdom rules and reign of God, and we're in the place where we're going to see God prevail. The message is clear. The message is what it is. It's time to repent. We've been under a judgment of God. Now, we can explain it away if you want to, but I'm going to tell you, if we don't repent and line up, we'll be going through another one. We'll repeat that. I think we need to be a little more alert than that. I think we need to have our hearing aids on and our eyes open a little more than that. Because it is time. The other part, I, I, I wish that I could articulate what I see in the spirit that the God's about to do. You see, all of the prophecies have been, I listen to them just like you do. I listen to head of the month. I, I, I you know, I confess to you, I watch it on the internet you know, <clears throat> rather than come, but that's not because of COVID because they go too late. <laughs> to drive home. <laughs> I mean, come and then drive a long way home. And, you know, but I, I want you to come. I, I, 
Forgive me, Catherine. But any. <laughs> no, but I, I, I watch it all. And prophecy after prophecy, head of the month, pro prophecies are strong that we're moving into the greatest move of God that ever has been. Now, we all want that. But God's saying, but there's another part to that. It's called repent. Repent, and then you'll see the fulfillment of those prophecies. Align with me, and you'll see the fulfillment of those prophecies. Conditional as they are, they're conditional based upon the fact that we must align with the plans and purposes of God and repent and, know, and walk straight with him. Can I get an amen in here today? Am I talking to the right people? All right. We're going to repent. Let's take a moment and repent. Will you agree with me today as we repent? And I, I actually wrote out a little something, but I want to pray over that. Okay. Father, Lord, we ask you, you've asked us to turn our hearts to you with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Father, we want to rend our hearts before you and return to you. For we know that you want to be gracious, merciful, and slow to anger. You're a God of great kindness, and you re relent from doing harm. Father, forgive us for our apathy. Father, forgive us for being intimidated by circumstances. Father, forgive us for not allowing ourselves to be transformed by the Word of God rather than the Word of the world. We ask you, Father, to transform our hearts, attune our hearts to you as we say, Father, please forgive us. We want to forsake the ways of the old. We want to forsake the ways that brought us to this place. We want to renew our hearts, renew our minds, renew our commitment with you today. Father, forgive us again as we rent from us those old, oh, those old thoughts and mindsets and open ourselves up to the new mindsets of the truth that you brought to us. Father, I pray that we will come together in unity, in agreement that, Father, we, no matter what we've done or haven't done, Father, this is a new day, and we want to walk in the latter rain today, Father. We want to know the latter rain, the full outpouring of your Spirit. We want to see our Jesus glorified. We want to see our God magnified. We want to see uh, the people of God rise up and not be ashamed but be rejoicing, not be intimidated, not pushed down, but to rise up and to become a force in the kingdom of God. Father, give us the tools that we need as we take our tools. You've given us great tools. Let us learn how to use those tools. The tools of praise, the tools of worship, the tools of prayer, the tools of testifying, the tools of magnificent coming to others with the story where we can tell the great story of your redemption. Father, we're a people. We're your people. We repent from trying to be anybody else because there is no other place to go. There's no other place we want to be. We want to be right in the middle of your heart. We want to be in the center of your plans. We want to be purposed by the Holy Spirit. We want to be directed by you, Father, you, Holy Spirit, and you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Brother, please forgive us. We've acted foolishly we've done things tried things in our own strength father we just know that we serve a gracious God a God that does not desire to harm us a God that does not, not desire he does not desire to in any way take away but wants to bring the greater blessing. He wants, Lord, you want to bless us so we'll be a blessing. Turn our hearts towards you and our priority to you today, Father. Let us seek you first in the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then you can bring all of these things to pass that need to come. So we just thank you today, Father, as we again confess our sins and know that you're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins 
in Jesus' name. If that's your confession today, I want you to lift your hand so that the Holy Spirit can see that as your confession in mind. That we're a people who need to be a people of repentance. We need to be a people of commitment, a people of putting our lives under the cross, behind the cross, but living beyond the cross. Oh, Father, we thank you for this day. You're a gracious God. You're a wonderful God. You're a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this time, y'all stand with me. Let's sing it again, what a friend we have in Jesus. Pitch it a little higher this time, Mario. I pitched me a little low. Mm, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our griefs and sins to bear. for Christ to you. Amen? For those who are in the sanctuary as well as those who are online, it is your desire to walk with Christ. I want you to pray after me. Amen? Heavenly Father, your word says that whoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they shall be saved. Father God, Apostle Buddy walked me through forgiveness of my sins. I come into agreement with that. Now, Lord Jesus, I call upon your name, a name that's greater than every name. Save me, Hosanna. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Make yourself real in my life. I now make you Savior. I now make you Lord. Lord Jesus, come in and dine with me. Spill your love all over me, oh God. I receive now salvation. I receive now everlasting life. I receive now the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's rejoice. Let's rejoice. Hallelujah. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we want you to email us at salvation at lifecenter.org. Again, salvation at lifecenter.org. Amen. Now, for those who are God has called to this place, to make Life Center your church home, a place where you will be equipped 
to go outside the walls. Amen. If God has put on your hearts that this is a place for you in this season, we welcome you to join Life Center. Are there anyone in the sanctuary that have a desire to join Life Center today? God has put on your hearts. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. The ushers will give you a card, so please um, fill it out. Amen. And for those who are online, if you desire to become a member of this body, we ask you to put it in the, in the chat box, number one. But number two, email us at newmembers at lifecenter.org. That's newmembers at lifecenter.org. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God, for today, for this service. Hallelujah. And once again, for new members, I mean, um, uh, as well as uh, those who are first-time guests, we thank you for coming. Amen. We, we, we thank um, the body here for coming, all friends and guests online. We thank you guys for joining us this morning to worship our King. Amen. All right, let us stand and be dismissed. Now, after the service, we will have prophetic ministry. Um, so after the service closes out, give us about five or ten minutes, and we will um, come and uh, do that. Amen. So lift your hands. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your mercy endures forever. We thank you, O God, that even your corrections are beautiful. That even, O God, that as your outstretched hands to correct us, to bring us back, we thank you, Father God, for your love that supersedes, O oh God, all forms of sins and transgressions, O oh God. God, we thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers us even today, O oh God. We thank you, Father God, that you shall rebuke the locusts and the, and the canker worms, O oh Lord God. We thank you, God, for the restoration, O oh God, of our vats being overflowed, O oh God. We thank you, Father God, that every vine, oh God, that you have put before us, that vineyard, oh God, that the wine press, oh God, that you have been pressing forth over the past year, that will bring forth new wine and new oil in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for this service. We lift it up to you now, God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Amen. We pray, God, now that you will bless these people, that you will protect them that we bind all forms of retaliation. We bind all backlash in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. We come against, oh God, every demonic assignment against our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. And we release, oh God, Psalm 91 upon them now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Ah, now rejoice. <laughs>